What's going on y'all? My name is Powerful Noun, and today I'm going to talk with you guys about Feral PvE DPS. If you're a new player and you get on Google and you type Feral Druid PvE DPS 1.12.1, the patch that we're playing in, and you hit search, you're going to find a whole lot of this. This has a negative impact on players who've not experienced vanilla and may want to experiment with the Druid class. In this guide, I'm going to show you guys what the Druid class is capable of as Feral in PvE. Druids will out DPS many classes in Tier 1 content, and at the very least, they'll never be last if played correctly in later content. In this guide, I'm going to talk with you guys about the pre raid best in slot for Feral PvE on Elysium PvP only. This is different from Nastarius PvP, so if you would like a guide for Nastarius PvP, let me know down in the comments and I'll make one for you guys because I love all of you. Um, after that, we're going to talk about talent choices, we're going to talk about consumables for maximizing your DPS, I'm going to discuss with you guys the rotation that you should be using, a couple of mandatory add-ons, and I'm going to throw a couple tips you guys away to help you perform better as Feral DPS and PvE so we can wash away all the negativity about Feral PvE DPS once and for all. So for the gear, there are some pieces that are extremely important and there are others that you can kind of skimp on and use alternatives. Um, we'll start with the most important one first and that's going to be the Wolf's Head Helm. Now this item is crafted by a tribal leather worker. Um, it's really cheap. It's like level 54 but you have to have it. It's a must and I'll explain why later in the rotation. Next is the neck piece. Uh, the best in slot for that is Amulet of the Dark Moon. This is a Dark Moon Fair reward. It costs 1,200 tickets, and I'm going to leave a link in the description to uh, show you guys what you can get tickets from. Best in slot on the shoulders are going to be the True Strike shoulders. Um, these drop an Upper Black Rock Spire from the first boss, Pyro Guard Ember Seer. There's going to be lots of competition for these. They're best in slot for every single physical damage class, so you're going to have to work your butt off for them. Best in slot back is. Cape of the Black Baron. Um, it drops in Strathon from the last boss, Baron Rivendare. It's going to be lots of competition for this one as well, so you're going to have to fight for it, but it's worth it. There's no better cape. Best in slot chest is the Cadaverous Armor. This drops in Skullamans off any of the mini bosses. There's six of them. It has a very low drop chance, so it's quite a grind. I actually never got it on Old Nostarius, but it's worth the grind for sure. For Bracers, I'd probably say use Shadowcraft, but it's not really that important. Shadowcraft or BOE. Um, Bracers off the Beast and Upper Black Rock Spire are a really good alternative here. Either way, just get anything with agility or, and or strength on it. Best in slot gloves are Devil Sword Gauntlets. Um, they're best in slot because of the set bonus with the pants. Uh, they're kind of expensive, but it is 100% worth the farm. Best in slot belt is the Cloud Runner Girdle. It drops in Lower Black Rock Spire from Quartermaster Zigris. This mob might be a rare spawn on Elysium. I'm not sure. He's supposed to be rare until 1.12, so we'll find out. Best in slot pants are the Devil Sword Leggings. Uh, they are crafted by a tribal leather worker and they're rather expensive, but 100% worth it. There's no better pants whenever they're coupled with the uh, the gloves for the set bonus. Best in slot boots are the Sand Stalker Ankle Guards. These are from Zulfaric. They're off a rare spawn named Zerillus. Um, they're kind of hard to get, so a good alternative are the boots off of Princess and uh, Princess Bronzebeard and Blackrock Depths. First best in slot ring is the Black Stone Ring. This drops in Maradon off of Princess Theradris. There's going to be lots of competition for this one. It is best in slot for all melee classes and hunters. The other best in slot ring is the Myrmidon Signet. I almost didn't want to include this one because it's crazy expensive. It's really rare. But for the sake of having this uh, guide be 100% best in slot, it's here. Um, it's a BOE epic world drop. Um, good alternative, in my opinion, would be the, uh, the ring off the last boss in Upper Black Rock Spire. Uh, Pain Weaver Band. For best in slot trinkets, um, Dark Moon card Maelstrom is going to be best in slot. Um, you get it from the Dark Moon Fair, you either have to collect the Elementals uh, cards and put the deck together or buy the deck. Um, it's best in slot forever. So no matter how expensive it is, it's going to be worth it. Second best in slot trinket is Black Hand's Breath. This is a quest reward from the Black Rock Spire quest chain. It starts with Warlord's Command for Horde or General Dracus's Command uh, for Alliance. This quest does also give the best in slot tank trinket for druids though, so some good alternatives if you decide to go with the tank trinket are Hand of Justice or Heart of Worm Thalok. Uh, Hand of Justice drops in Black Rock Depths, Heart of Worm Thalok drops in Lower Black Rock Spire, and I don't believe it shares a cooldown with Dark Moon Card Maelstrom. I'm quickly going to touch on stat priority. So, 
The way stats work for Feral Druids is strength is going to be your most important stat. For every one point of strength, you're going to get 2.2 attack power. This is the biggest damage increase you can get. The second most important stat is going to be agility. For every one point of agility, you're going to get one attack power. And for every 57 points of agility, you're going to get 1% crit. Afterwards, you're going to focus on crit and attack power. Nothing else is important for Feral Druid PvE DPS. For your talents, your tree is going to look a little something uh, like this. Um, for the most part, this is the build you're going to use for Feral PvE. You can use this build to tank as well in 5-mans and uh, in raids if you have the gear for it. And I'll quickly show you guys the most important ones. Omen of Clarity is in the balance tree. It's a 15 minute buff. It gives you a chance to gain clear casting uh, every single time you melee attack. Uh, whenever you get clear casting, any ability that you use will cost zero energy. This is free shreds, big damage increase. This one is improved shred. You absolutely need this for the rotation for Fair Druid DPS um, for power shifting. So make sure you grab this one. Fuhrer, this one's in the resto tree. It gives you 40 energy every time you change into cat form. Also, 100% required for the Feral DPS rotation. Now, you're going to have one talent point left after this build. This is the build that I 100% recommend. Um, that one extra talent point, you can either put it into the threat generation, or you can put it into feline swiftness so you move faster in cat form. Trying to find a Feral Druid PvE DPS rotation guide on the internet is extremely hard. You can find bits and pieces of information here and there, but for the most part, there aren't a lot of people that understand how the rotation works. Now, for the most part, it's power shifting. So, with the Wolf's Head Helm and Fuhrer, if you shapeshift, you should get about 60 energy every time you shapeshift. So, you want to time this so that whenever your energy takes up and you shift, you get between 60 and 80 energy. This is going to allow you to shred twice. So, for every shapeshift, you want to shred twice, is what I've found out after a pretty good amount of testing. So you're op you'll open with Ravage, you'll shred one time. If both of those have crit, you'll be at four combo points, at which point you'll shift in and out of cat form to get your energy back, and then you'll use Ferocious Bite. At that point, you'll power shift again, and then you'll shred twice. And this is pretty much how you're going to continue on. One thing to remember while doing your rotation is, if you have four combo points, don't shred again. Go ahead and use Ferocious Bite. If you shred again, it's inefficient DPS. If you're at three combo points, it's okay to shred. And this is because anytime you get a crit, um, you get one extra combo point. So you want to spend your energy and your mana wisely and use it as effectively as possible. I understand that this can come across as being a little bit complicated, but it's really engaging and it's really fun. It's probably the most fun DPS rotation in vanilla. It takes a lot of practice, so you're going to need to put a lot of time into it, but it is worth learning, trust me. At the current patch that Elysian PvP will be in, there are a lot of consumables that will stack with each other. This means that there's a lot of buffing that you can do to increase your DPS. And a lot of other players won't be farming these consumables, so it can really give you an edge on the DPS meters whenever you're trying to uh, impress your guild or impress your guild mates or, you know, flex your EP. I'm going to go ahead and list all of the consumables only that uh, you can stack, not including buffs. Um, you don't have to use all of these if you don't want to, but if you're a full tryhard and you want to go as hard as possible, you're going to want to get every single one of these. The first item is Winterfall Firewater. This increases your melee attack power by 35 for 20 minutes. These are a random drop off of Winterfall Fur Bulks located in Winter Spring. These are the two elixirs you'll want to run with, Elixir of the Mongoose and Elixir of Giants. These are crafted by an alchemist. They're relatively cheap. A stack was running like 5 gold on Nistarius whenever I was playing there. Average. These items are called Jujus and they are quest rewards from a quest that you start in Winter Spring and never look. Um, the quest is called A Little Luck and whenever you complete the entire quest chain you will be able to do repeatable quests where you'll go and farm specific mobs in Winter Spring depending on what buff you want for these items and you'll take those items and turn them in at the NPC and they'll give you the buff items. These are the items that you're going to use to get mana back. Dark runes and demonic runes are pretty much the exact same thing. What they do is, is they take health away from you and give you mana back. Um, dark runes you can get from the mini bosses in Skullamance. Demonic runes are farmed from the satyrs in Philwood. Major mana pots are crafted by an alchemist. You can buy them in the auction house. They are pretty expensive though. This next item is called Roids. It's a quest reward from a quest called Snickerfang Jowls and, that you do in the Blasted Lands. You get the quest from an NPC named Blood Mage Drazeal. Um, 
This lasts for 60 minutes. It gives you 25 strength. You can only hold one in your inventory. So whenever you use this one, you will have to go back and farm another one. You're pretty much only going to have one per raid. So save it for the boss fight you want to try hard the most on. This next item is called the Elemental Sharpening Stone. This is a buff that you cast on your weapon that increases your melee critical strike chance by 2%. I couldn't find anywhere on the internet that would verify if this worked for druids or not, but after testing it, I'm pretty sure that it does. The recipe for this drops in Molten Core, so don't expect to see it right away, but it should start popping up pretty soon and they're relatively cheap to make. The average player is not going to be able to afford flasks, at least not for a while. Um, but if you're rich as fuck and you're balling out of control and you're trying to go super hard on the DPS meters as a feral druid, the flask of distilled wisdom is 100% the way to go. It's going to increase your mana by 2,000 for two hours. That is a shit ton more power shifts, a shit ton more DPS. You're going to get a lot of mana back from your innervate too because your mana pool's larger. Lastly, I'll talk about food buffs. I couldn't confirm if smoked desert dumplings were going to be in the game. If they are in the game, these are the best food. They increase your strength by 20 for 15 minutes. Um, if these aren't in the game, you're going to want to go with the Greater Sagefish Delight just to increase your MP5, and this is going to get you a couple more shape shifts on every fight. There are only two add-ons that I find 100% necessary for uh, Feral Druid PvE, and the first one of those is going to be Energy Watch. This is the small yellow bar you see here, and what it does is it, whenever it gets all the way over, that's whenever your energy takes up 20 points. So you're going to use this to time whenever you're going to use your power shifts. This is extremely vital in learning how to maximize your DPS. I can't really like give you the best strategy on learning how to do this. The best way to do it is just going to be to practice. You're going to want to shift right whenever the energy is about to tick. That's how you maximize your DPS as feral. It's going to take a lot of practice. The only other add-on I recommend you using is Druid Bar. This is just going to let you keep track of your mana more effectively. Um, whenever you shapeshift into a form, there's no way to see your mana with the default UI. So if you're not using a special uh, set of unit frames, you're going to want to get Druid Bar. It's really, really, really important to keep track of your mana so you know how much damage you can do. So as always, at the end of my videos, I'm going to leave you guys with a few tips that I think will help you improve your play. Starting with tip number one. Learn the mana cost of cat form. Knowing the mana cost of cat form is going to be a big difference between you coming out of your form and going back in, or you coming out of your form and standing there meleeing with your weapon looking like an idiot in front of your entire raid group. So get really familiar with the cost of cat form. Tip number two, practice. A lot. I'm a seasoned World of Warcraft player. I've been playing this game since it came out. This rotation is still pretty tough for me. Um, I'm not saying that you guys can't learn it. I'm not the smartest man on the planet. I've just spent a lot of time reading things, so it might seem that I'm knowledgeable and intelligent, but honestly, if I can do this, anyone can do this. So just practice. It's worth learning the rotation perfectly. You'll be able to maximize your DPS as long as you practice. The last tip I have for you guys and what I say in all my Druid videos, don't give up. If you want to play Feral Druid PvE DPS, do it. Be the absolute best at it. Go as hard as humanly fucking possible. Make every single person that ever said Feral Druids were useless DPS, eat their words. Link your raid stats to people on Reddit and on the forums and tell them to suck your ass whenever you're out DPSing people. The game is meant to be played how you want to play it. Don't play the way other people want you to play. Play to enjoy yourself. Play to have fun. And if that is being a cat, in a raid group doing big ass damage and that's what you should do all right guys youtube says that my audience retention rate is about 30 percent so if you're still watching this point i want to say thank you um i put a lot of time in this video this took me a long time to put together uh, so if you've watched this far i really 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 appreciate it if you've learned anything from this video please hit the like button for me youtube uh, favors content with activity on it so if you'd like or leave a comment that's going to make sure that this video gets seen by other people and it's going to make me really 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 happy and it's going to let me continue making content like this if you haven't subscribed to my channel and you're new to the channel i put out content like this all the time i also stream druid leveling on elysium pvp so if you subscribe to the channel, you'll see when I'm streaming and you can come and join me and all my awesome friends in the stream. We got a lot of cool guys in there and we'd love to have you.